Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sexy and Saved podcast. Today, I think I'm going to call this episode Relationship Goals. And, you know, Relationship Goals is uh, a sermon series that Pastor Michael Todd has been preaching um, for quite some time now, I think. I think it's been a few, well, don't give me the line. I, I think he started it last year. Maybe it was before that. And now it's a book. But to be honest with you, this episode doesn't really have that much to do with that book. This wasn't inspired by that book. My sister did actually ask me to to um, do an episode on relationship goals. However, she didn't inspire this either. It was actually um, this whole debacle with August Alsina and the Smiths that really inspired me to just, I guess, go off on a mild tangent about what I think of the term relationship goals. So welcome and let's get into it. So for a very long time, Anybody that knows me knows that Will and Jada were like my relationship goals if I had them. They were full of beauty and laughter and passion, building and blending families right. They were successful, just this power couple. And it was like they were like the the poster family for Black love. Then I get older and the rumors, they'd always been there. The rumors of um, them doing playground things, a.k.a. swinging. But now the internet is really popping and you've got third parties talking, right? And needless to say, that vision of perfect, beautiful black love has crashed and burned. But it wasn't, you know, all due to them. And I will say that my first point is relationship goals. Those I don't think should ever be contingent or dependent upon an outside source. Anybody outside of your relationship should not be your relationship goals. I believe that if two people are going to be together, those goals for that relationship should come from those two people. The next point, I guess you can say, would be, uh, hmm. I don't, I don't really know how to put this part. However, I know that for me, my relationship goals consist of just the two of us and God, and that's it. I am not interested in having any third parties, fourth parties, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, no extra parties having anything to do with my relationship. And when I say that, I mean there will be no extracurricular activities. I believe in complete monogamy. I am not interested in you having a girlfriend over there and a person to handle this for you over there and someone that does your laundry on Saturdays over here. No, I'm not about that life. I am way too, like, I don't have the mental or the physical capacity to deal with that. And being of West African descent, you know, I've heard about, uh, I guess you could say my uh, the word ancestors. Well, yes, my ancestors, my prior family, my the elders of my family, having, you know, multiple wives, many, many children all over the globe, just everywhere, aunties and uncles for days, years, months, and all of posterity. And I'm not interested in that life either. Like that is not is not for me. I've always known it wasn't for me. I don't do well with sharing things. My sisters can probably tell you that. I love I love to give. I really do. I love to give good gifts and things like that, but I'm not interested in sharing my food and I'm definitely not interested in sharing my man. So what um is also very interesting to me is that today I saw a post from the absolutely awesome Shante Atkins. And she was talking about the term biblical marriage and about how people are always saying, I want a biblical marriage and I want a marriage like that. And about, you know what? There are people, men specifically, that shall remain nameless. One man in particular that I will definitely leave nameless. 
he likes to joke around and be like, well, you know, they had lots of wives in the Bible and they had multiple wives in the Bible. Well, according to what happened in the Garden of Eden and the Lord creating this wonderful earth, he made one man. And then he said, it's not good for this man to be alone. He made one woman for that one man. And that is the part of the Bible that I would like to abide by. I am one woman, you are one man, and it'll just be us together until we decide to have children and things like that. However, I am not of the belief that having multiple people in your situation, whether you're married or you're dating, I don't think it's healthy. Can you imagine? There are so many different spirits, okay? It's hard enough trying to intertwine two people to come together as one flesh. And, you know, oftentimes those people, excuse me, those people already have so many different spirits attached to them. They've been with other people. They've become attached to other people and realize it or not, everybody has relationship residue, okay? So if you've been in relationships prior to the one that you may or may not be in now, you've got some residue on you, boo, and you're bringing that into your new relationship, your your marriage or wh- whatever your situation is. And whether you know it or not, a lot of those pieces don't always get cleansed off of you. So you're bringing that into that too. Can you imagine being married and having different spirits coming in and out of your life for, uh, I guess, as long as you both shall live, if you decide to stay together for as, you know, for as such. Yeah, I can't imagine that. So I was really inspired by this whole August Alsina and Jada Pinka Smith and Will Smith triangle, which has not really truly been confirmed. I've always thought that August Alsina was a kind of an interesting, he's very eccentric, he's very eclectic, but I've never taken him to be a liar. Um, I think that he, I don't, I mean, where there's smoke, there's often fire. And I don't want to say, as I literally sit here and look at this vision board that has Will and Jada on it, and I forgot all about it. I just so happened to glance over and there they are with the word marriage next to them. Now, everybody's idea of marriage is different, obviously, these days. And I think that this is a great example of that. For me, my idea of marriage is two people coming together and building something that is worth talking about. However, you could say that Will and Jada have done a great job of that, right? They've built this beautiful family, this beautiful empire. They've got two great kids that are just all kinds of successful and doing all these interesting things in the world. And you would think that, okay, they've got a great marriage, right? Well, only they know. However, based on some of the red table talks that they've had and shared with the world, it's left a lot of people, I think, to ponder. It's definitely left me to ponder what the ins and outs are. And, you know, they have definitely stood on saying that they will not divorce. They will not break up. And I think that's great. I've always thought that divorce not being an option was a wonderful concept when it comes to being married. Because when I get married, I want to do it one time, one time only. And um, I don't want to, I don't want divorce to be an option that's put on the table as like a a cop out or like this is the get out of jail. Definitely not going to be free, but get out of jail card, right? So I I don't know. It's just really tricky to sit and, and think about all that they have built together. But then you have to go back to my first point is, you know, it's different for different people. And I think it also goes to show that you cannot look at someone's situation and be like, that's a situation that I want. You don't know what they got going on between the two of them. You cannot say that you know, a couple has something that you don't want, on the other hand, because you might think that, you know, this person is not loving towards this person, or this person doesn't display affection towards this person that I would like it. But guess what? You're not in that relationship. So it really doesn't matter if those two people are thriving and striving and doing what they have to do, then we really can't say that, um, 
It's something that we don't want. For all you know, they might be the happiest people in the world. And that couple that's plastered all over the place with these plastic smiles on might be in a living hell. So back to August Alcina. I don't think he's lying. I, I really don't. And my thing is, is if Will and Jade, if this is what you want to do, if this is how you roll, what is the point in putting on this perfect picture to everyone? Because it's setting up a false pretense to people who are looking to try to attain something that is not attainable. You know, so for so long, people have thought that they were just so great and so perfect. And I'm just like, well, there's no need to deny it. If this is what has worked for y'all, it's what has worked for y'all. If you don't want to promote this type of lifestyle, then, well, I, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that one. I do feel for August Alcina, though, because he has definitely been through a lot from losing his brother. I know that the relationship with his mother has been strained over the years. His sister, well, it's actually, I believe the sister, his sister that actually passed away was his brother's girlfriend or wife. And that is how he ended up with the three girls, because I believe it was their daughters. So his brother and his brother's girlfriend had three girls and his brother was shot and killed uh, a few years ago. And his sister or his brother's girlfriend passed away, I want to say two years ago on Christmas Day from cancer. So August has definitely been through some things. He's definitely been through some trials. He's seen a lot. And I do think that this relationship that he had with Jada may or may not have had with her is something that might have been, he might have been looking for a, a salve to heal some open wounds. And I think it was just a, a matter of, um, I don't know, I think it was a matter of opportunity. I don't think he's an opportunist at all. I think that it just so happened that they both might have had something in that time that was kind of licking each other's wounds, no pun intended. And I think that that's just how they kind of got caught up in that whole situation. I'm really interested in hearing what Jada Pinkett Smith has to say. She says she's going to bring herself to the red table. I don't know how much she could possibly reveal or say. Her and Will Smith have both denied it. And so far, that's all we've heard. And I wouldn't be surprised if this joint just kind of blew over because there's so much going on in the world right now that it's like, okay, this is something minor. It's definitely small fries in a heap of, you know, big potatoes and some hot oil. So I wouldn't be surprised if this kind of blew over. And who knows? She might not ever come to the red table and the red table might not ever come back to us either. But I'm really interested to hear what you all have to say about relationship goals and just trying to operate in the dating world and moving towards, for myself personally, I'm moving towards something serious. I would like to build something that is honorable to the kingdom of God. To me, Polygamy is not honorable to the kingdom of God. I don't care if it was in the Bible. The crap is crazy and it just is problematic. I do not see any benefits in polygamy. I don't care if people say, well, it helps to divvy up the work and blah, blah, blah. Oh, shut up. That is not good enough for me. That is not a good enough foundation or excuse for polygamy. I wouldn't do it. I can't do it. I wouldn't be able to survive in no polygamous situation. Okay. So I'm really interested to hear what other people's ideas of what relationship goals are. For for me, my relationship goals are very, very, I guess you can say traditional. I want to be married to one person. I want us to build together. I want us to do something that is worth calling a legacy, a positive one. I want to have an inheritance to leave for my children and for their children and, you know, so on and so forth. Those are the things that I really aspire to. I want to be able to inspire other people as well to know that, you know, this whole give up when it's really, really hard or 
move on and try again with someone else, you know, it just, to me, it's not worth it. It's like you end up going in this constant cycle of just looking for something that you're, you're never going to find. You're never going to attain it. There's no such thing as perfection. No one is perfect. However, you know, this whole Jada Pinkett Smith and August Alcina joint just got me looking at things very differently. And then as I've gotten older, I've, I've looked at things differently anyway. However, this right here, you know, is just got hypocrite written all over it. And I'm sad to say it because I really do love the Smiths. I really do. However, you know, you realize you don't know these people anyway. This is Hollywood, aka Holly Weird. Like there's so many weird things that happen in that realm. And it's very necessary to stay prayed up and covered and just knowing the word for yourself and not really looking to people to model something for you that is not really, I mean, it's not their job. It's not what they're, they're put here to do. So I want to hear from you all. I would love to know what you, your thoughts are on this whole August Alcina and Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith and whoever else triangle, rectangle, octagon, whatever it is. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So please, please, please follow me on Instagram at Kiss My Aggie. Leave some uh, uh, comments and your thoughts and things under the post that will have probably a picture of me in August Alcina. Yeah, I want to know your thoughts. So go ahead and uh, go on over there and do that. So until next time, be blessed and bless others.